Hello, I'm David Guthrie with His Word Lives Ministry. I'm going to be bringing a preaching message today about the Apostle Paul telling the church at Philippi, I have you in my heart. It's coming from the book of Philippians in chapter 1, verses 1 through 11 this morning. And let's go ahead and start reading God's Word as the Apostle gives this beautiful message to the church at Philippi. He says, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We see here where the Apostle Paul starts off this epistle addressing himself as servants of Jesus Christ. He's slave to the debt that Jesus paid on the cross. And he's addressing this epistle to the, the saints at Philippi and the deacons and the, and the bishops or the preachers. He's addressing this epistle to the believers that had been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ that are at Philippi, the church at Philippi. And he says to them, grace be unto you and peace. God's <clears throat> divine grace, God's spiritual favor in that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God, through belief in his son, Jesus Christ, has made it possible in that we can receive the grace from God the Father and his son, Jesus Christ, and be forgiven for our sins, where we deserve death and separation from God because of our sins, we can have life and a relationship with God forever and ever, even eternal life. And we can have peace in our life knowing what's going to happen to us after we pass away. Rather than going to hell, we can go to heaven and be with God Almighty and His Son Jesus and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. And He's telling the church at Philippi, because you have believed in Jesus, grace and peace be, be upon you, <clears throat> be unto you, the brothers and sisters at the church at Philippi. And then the Apostle uh, Paul starts praising God for this church. Let's look and see what it says in verse 3. And we'll read through uh, around verse 8 as, as the Apostle Paul preach, uh, praises God for this church at Philippi. In verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making request with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as, is it, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, Ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you, all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. We see here where the Apostle Paul is saying that he has this church in his heart. He's praising God for these brothers and these sisters in Christ at the church at Philippi. In verse 3 it says, he thanks God for every remembrance of them. Every time he remembers them, he's praising and thanking God that, that the Lord brings this church into remembrance to him. He's always making prayer requests for them. And when he does this, he has joy in his heart as he remembers these brothers and sisters at Philippi. And he's praising God for the fellowship in the gospel that he's experienced with his church at Philippi. 
from the first day even until now. In Paul's second missionary uh, trip, he was walking along the riverside and he met a lady named Lydia and she believed in the gospel and she was faithful and she believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that if she would ask him to forgive her for her sins, that Jesus would save her. She believed that he was the sacrifice for all the sins of the world, including hers. And she professes Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And this lady, Lydia, was saved and converted at Philippi. And she, <clears throat> she uh, her whole house was saved. And she spread the gospel with the Apostle Paul. And her whole house and family was saved. And even her house was turned into a church at Philippi. And then the Apostle Paul says that he just, just uh, <coughs> appreciates the fellowship that he had with her and the other converts at Philippi from the first day that he started preaching and proclaiming Jesus in that city, even until now. Now is 10 years later after he founded that church in a, in a house arrest prison situation in Rome as he writes back this epistle to the church at Philippi. He appreciates them. He appreciates the fellowship that they had in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ out into the world. And he appreciates and praises God for them for the fellowship of the gospel in Jesus Christ from that first convert, Lydia, until the many converts there at that town and, and the church and, and, and how it's grown now 10 years later, the Apostle Paul appreciates and, and praises God for the fellowship at that church. <clears throat> he says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work Jesus Christ Almighty began a good work there at Philippi through the Apostle Paul and that grace was received and people were converted and saved and they were transformed from a sinner into a saint and they had no hope and had guilt and shame and now they have an everlasting life of forgiveness for all sins in a personal relationship because of the grace of Jesus Christ in their lives. And this is the work that God Almighty has begun in each and every individual there at the church of Philippi and in your church, the converse, the brothers and sisters in Christ. God has begun a good work in you. And the Apostle Paul says that he has blessed assurance or confidence that Jesus will perform <clears throat> this good work until the day of Jesus Christ or until the day that Jesus comes back. God Almighty and Jesus will complete the work that's begun in every single convert that's ever come to Jesus and been saved and proclaimed him as their Lord and Savior. He will help you along the way to walk this path with him, just abide in him, stay with Jesus, and he'll help you to complete, and he will perform this all the way until a day when you either pass away or Jesus comes back during your lifetime. But until the return of Jesus Christ, all oh, this work will be completed. His grace will be poured out upon you just like it was this church at Philippi. And he says that it is right for him to say these things about the church at Philippi. Because he says, I have you in my heart. I love you, church. I don't uh, say things about you from a... <clears throat> from a distracted, uh, sinful point of view. I say these things about you because I know you. I saw you come and be converted and be saved. I fellowship with you. I have a deep love for you. The position in which I'm, I'm 
uh, preaching and proclaiming these scriptures from the Bible and this epistle to the <clears throat> to the church at Philippi is a foundation of love based on Jesus. Jesus is God. God is love. The things that I say here are about the love of Jesus Christ for the church. I have you in my heart. I love you. I appreciate the friends of this ministry. I appreciate being able to proclaim and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ out into the world. I appreciate their belief and faith in Jesus. I appreciate their desire uh, to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and that people can be saved in this world. And it's right for me to say these things because I come from a position of love, a position of godly character, a position of a loving kindness towards you. And I know you and your fellowship. <clears throat> And as we defend and we confirm the gospel of Jesus Christ out into the world, I want you to know that ye are partakers of this grace. This grace that Jesus makes possible when he saves you and forgives you for all your sins. You're washed as white as snow. You now have a personal relationship because of the grace, the divine favor from Jesus Christ. <clears throat> You're a partaker of the same grace that the Apostle Paul was talking about so many years ago uh, to the saints at Philippi. You're a partaker of the same grace, the ones that are watching this video that know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You're a partaker of the same grace Praise God. You can defend the gospel. You can tell the truth about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is that there's one way to heaven. And that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on a cross. And that he died there to be a sacrifice for all the sins of the world. And if a person would believe on Jesus as the Son of God, and that He is the sacrifice for sins. Their sins shall be forgiven, and they shall be saved. This is the confirming, the convicting, the truth about a relationship with God and the way to heaven, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying to this church that they are partakers of his grace. <clears throat> and God knows. Uh, God knows and is a witness about how much the Apostle Paul loves this church. He loves them. He's been prison now. Ten years writing back to this church after founding it. He's telling them that he longs to see them again. He wants them to know that he's thinking about them. He's praising God for his relationship with them. He wants them to know that he greatly longs after them. And that <clears throat> they are in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Bowels being a deep inner-ness of, <clears throat> of a man. And he's talking about the deep love that he has for this church in Jesus Christ, in his spirituality, and that is he's a spiritual person, and that he draws close to Jesus, and he feels the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that, that fellowships with him, confirms the gospel, helps him to preach the truth out into the world, all of this spirituality, and that his cup is running over because he has a closeness with God. He's a spiritual man. He's a holy man. He's a godly man. And he wants the people at the church at Philippi to know that he loves them with this deep spiritual love that he has inside of them for them. 
I want you to know that two years ago we started His Word Lives Ministry. I didn't know how this thing was going to go. I am so blessed with the friends and the fellowship that has taken place over the last couple of years. And I just praise God. And it's right for me to think this because I have a deep, sincere love in my heart for all the friends that I long after you. I love to hear from you. I love meeting you in person. And it's because I bestow a deep spiritual love inside of me for you in Jesus Christ. As I live and I walk spiritually fed by Jesus Christ, I love the friends in church of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and then the apostle Paul says, I'm going to pray for you. He's praised God for, for them here as he starts this epistle. Now he's going to pray for them. Let's read the scripture as the apostle Paul prays for this church at Philippi. <clears throat> In this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, <clears throat> unto the glory and praise of God. We see here where the Apostle Paul Praise for this church. He prays for each and every individual brother and sister at this church at Philippi as he gets down into some details about living for God, some details about loving uh, each other in the church. The Apostle Paul says <clears throat> that I pray for you and I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and judgment. He prays for them that the love of Jesus Christ would grow in each and every one of these members at this church a little more day after day after day and that their relationship <clears throat> is cultivated, is it's, uh, uh, multiplied, by the love of Jesus Christ, a sincere, deep love inside of them, and that they would have knowledge about this love, and that they're not just to, to love as feelings, because our feelings change, or in and out, but the love of Jesus Christ is steadfast and solid, and we care for each other, we lift each other up more than ourselves. We help uh, uh, help people that are suffering along the way. We bring deliverance, uh, Jesus, to people that are suffering out into the world and don't know Christ with other members of the church. We share in the love of Jesus Christ going out in the world. And we also obey on more and more in judgment in our life. And that we learn more and more as Christians as we study the Word of God. What is, uh, what is love and what is not love? <clears throat> the Bible tells us that there's, there's a greater reward to love someone and to do some, some good to someone that has had a distraction with you rather than someone that has been just all buddy-buddy and in favor with you. It's the love of Jesus Christ that enables us to love an enemy. It's the love of Jesus Christ and our growth as Christians that enable us to extend a warm and loving welcome out to someone that's undesirable. It's the love of Jesus that extended his love out to us while we were yet still sinners. And God wants us. And he's praying the, the Apostle Paul here for, to, for us to abound more and more in this love. <clears throat> and then the Apostle, the Apostle Paul says that <clears throat> he prays that, uh, that, that ye may approve things that are excellent. 
Uh, that's as we grow as Christians, that we understand the ways of God. The uh, God Almighty is perfect and pure and holy and has never sinned. And Jesus has never sinned. And the Holy Spirit has never sinned. They're perfect and excellent. And Paul prays that we will, will abide and we will know this excellence in our lives more and more in our lifetime. What a prayer request. And he says for us to be sincere and without offense. Don't be fake. Uh, don't do something to be in favor with somebody more than another. Just be yourself in Christ, living for Jesus, and treat each other equally with the love of Jesus Christ in your life. And he prays for this church to not take offense. Don't wear your attitude on your sleeve. Don't be easy to to get to a point of displeasure with somebody. You're going to be offended. There's going to be things that get, get on to you. Just let them go. Just let them go. Don't take that offense. Just go to Jesus and pray about it. Ask for strength not to take offense. And keep a loving disposition about you. Keep a godliness about you. Don't take offense about things along the way. And if when, so, and if, and when something uh, comes along the way, forgive people. Be a forgiving person. Jesus forgave you for all of your sins in your life. The ones that you made up until being saved. The ones that you'll make today. And the ones in the future. Jesus Christ Almighty died on the cross to forgive you for your sins. Let us not take offense and forgive others for their sins. <clears throat> Till the day of Christ, or all the way, he prays this prayer, all the way until the day Jesus comes back. And then the last verse, the Apostle Paul, still in this prayer, says, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ and unto the glory and praise of God. Let us pray for each other and pray for the church that we be filled with the fruits of righteousness and that Jesus Christ was righteous. Our righteousness is filthy rags. It's this our ability, our confidence in ourselves or anything about us is as filthy rags. But if we'll praise God and give Him the glory and believe that He can transform us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we can be transformed and do the right thing in situations. Take it to God in prayer. Get in the habit of making God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit a part of every decision, a part of, a part of every matter uh, of your life, every area of your life, and make it a matter of fact that Jesus is involved in your life and you're lifted and praying with Him to seek out the right thing to do, God's will in your life. And if you'll do that, he'll impute his righteousness into your life. It'll no longer be your righteousness, but it'll be God's will in your life. And it'll affect your natural life. And that you'll bear fruit. You'll share the gospel of Jesus Christ rather than being too lazy to do it. You'll love someone that's hard to get along with rather than uh, developing a barrier between you and them. God will enable His righteousness or the right thing to do in your life, in all areas of your life. Praise God and give the glory to Jesus Christ and give the glory and praise to God Almighty where it should lay. The Apostle Paul here, he's given an introduction and told people that 
It's Jesus and God the Father that now allows a person to have grace and peace in their life. Now we're going to pray a prayer here in a minute. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, and you've never been forgiven for your sins, today can be the day of your salvation, and you can experience God's grace and peace in your life. <clears throat> and the Apostle Paul also, he praised God for this church at Philippi. I'm praising God today, this very moment in this video. I'm praising God for the friends that he's brought into my life. I'm praising him for the remembrance of these people along the way, for the prayer requests of joyful thoughts about them, for their uh, activities with me in the gospel and activities with other Christians in their lives. <clears throat> and I just praise God for the fellowship of the church or all the brothers and sisters that I've ever met in my life. I just praise God for that fellowship in my life. And I know that I have you in my heart. I know that I have the church of Jesus Christ in my heart. And I love you and I praise God for you. And I pray for you also to approve <clears throat> the excellent things of God. And know them in your life. Allow your, the love of Jesus to abound more and more and more in, in your life. And I just... just uh, pray to God that His righteousness bears fruit in your life. Seek out God in His will in all the ways of your life and give Him all the glory and praise because this is a life that's made possible through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? That's a big question. <laughs> I have you in my heart. I love Jesus and what he's done for the church and for me. I just praise him and give him all the glory. Do you know Jesus in your life? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Jesus, we come to you, Lord, Savior. Oh, Jesus, we thank you so much for the life that you made possible for us. God, I want to pray if there's one watching that don't know you, God, I pray for their salvation. I pray that they get down on their knees and ask you to forgive them for their sins. And God, I know you'll save them, Lord. Thank you for being our Savior and sacrifice on the cross. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with me in this message. I have you in my heart. Thank you.